Reverb is one of the most commonly used plugins within music production and within mixing, so you should probably know how to use it and use it like the pros do. In this video, I'm gonna share with you several different tricks that professional producers and mixing engineers use that I wish I would have known when I got started. So let's get started. I'm gonna be using vocals to demonstrate, but you can use all these different techniques across different instruments and instrument groups as well. So tip number one is getting rid of consonances and sibilances from your reverbs specifically. Now this is mostly an issue that you're gonna have with vocals, not gonna be as big of a deal with other instruments. Now, before we even get into all of this stuff, the very first thing is, is that when you're working with reverbs, you should primarily be working with your reverbs within the context of effects strips or effects channels or buses. In Logic, you would do this by simply going into this area here, clicking and holding your mouse down, go to bus, and then you can select any of these open buses to create an effects channel. Now, obviously I already have a bunch. This is a track that's already been mixed and released. So we can just go ahead and pick one that's open here as a demonstration. And you're gonna do option and click, and that's gonna send 100% of this specific signal to this now empty track. And from here, we can add our effects, which in this case, we're gonna go ahead and add a reverb. Now, what I'm gonna do is just use a room reverb because room reverbs, especially to me, are where this becomes a really big problem, but it does become a problem on halls and chambers and other examples like that as well. All right, so we're gonna do a one second decay. So this is a one second long room. So this fader here is what's gonna ultimately control the volume of this reverb. And staring at the wall. Obviously that's gonna to be too much. What I want you to really pay attention to is the sounds of S's and T's and other sibilant type consonances running through this reverb. I'm gonna turn the reverb a little bit louder than it normally would be, just so you can really hear it. Three o'clock in the morning, staring at the wall. Now again, I, I would certainly not be mixing it this loud, but I think we can really easily hear how the S's and some of the T's and things sound on this vocal. Let's just solo it. Three o'clock in the morning, Staring at the wall Got no words for this feeling So you can really hear it on the got these words the s sounds and things like that So what you're gonna do is actually put the reverb in the second spot and so that there's an open spot here And what we're gonna do is simply throw a de in front of this reverb And then I just go ahead and pick a wide band and then I'm gonna set the threshold to be pretty low, that way it, it gets triggered sooner and then I'm gonna reduce this a decent amount like 6 7 dB now listen to this before and after. This is without the plugin on. Three o'clock in the morning, staring at the wall. Now let's turn it on. Staring at the wall. That makes a massive difference. So just really listen to staring at the wall. Here's with it off. Staring at the wall. Here's with that on. Staring at the wall makes a massive difference. So what this is helping us do, it's kind of ducking the S sound out of the reverb and just notching that out. It's not affecting the brightness and the overall coloration of the reverb. So some people might say, just use a filter and just roll off all the highs. But the problem is, is that's gonna actually affect the actual color of that reverb. So I don't wanna be adjusting the color of the reverb. I don't want the room to sound dark. I just wanna get rid of the S sounds and some of those T sounds. So in the context of the entire mix, we can listen to it. Three o'clock in the morning. Staring at the wall. Now let's listen to it again without the deesser in the context of the mess. Three o'clock in the morning. Staring at the wall. Makes a huge difference. One more time. Three o'clock in the morning. Staring at the wall. Got no words for this feeling. So you're sitting with it all. So there you go. That's how you get rid of these consonances and some of those hard S's and T's specifically from the reverbs. And that brings me to tip number two, and that is using two separate reverbs to make your vocals or whatever it is sound bigger and wider. So obviously so far what I've put on this vocal is just the room reverb, but in the actual mix that was released, you can see here, I actually have multiple different buses. I have Valhalla, which is a four second reverb, and I'm also using this room reverb, which is Chromoverb. Chromoverb actually is a pretty decent reverb for room. So to do this, what I typically do with the two reverbs is I have one reverb that is a room reverb, and then a second reverb, which is usually more of the reverb that you're actually hearing. This will make sense here in a second. So I already have the room reverb that we just created, so I'm gonna simply create another bus do bus 15, send 100% of it. I'm gonna do exactly what I talked about here, which is creating the de -esser. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and use Valhalla, four second decay. And obviously this is gonna be too loud, so I'm gonna have to bring this fader down. Three o'clock in the morning, 
Staring at the wall. All right, so what we have right now is two separate reverbs that are actually working together. One reverb is the room, which is kind of giving more of this closer space. And the second reverb is Valhalla, which is a four second reverb, which is gonna give more of the quote unquote spray of the reverb at the tail end of phrases. So if we listen to this just right now with both reverbs on, it sounds great, but I'm gonna actually help you understand what it's happening. So what I wanna do is actually turn off the room. Okay, so all we're gonna be hearing is the bigger reverb. And then I'm gonna pull in the room reverb so you can hear that it actually adds some wideness or perceived wideness to the vocal itself. And by the way, if you're listening to this on your phone or just like on, on your computer speakers, you're not gonna be able to hear this super great. So make sure you have headphones or monitors to hear this. So this is just with the longer four second decay. Three o'clock in the morning, staring at the wall. Now, obviously this sounds great as it is, but just to add a little bit extra sauce, we're gonna go ahead and bring that room reverb back in. Now I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna start it at zero and I'm gonna pull the fader up so you can actually hear what happens as that reverb gets added. Three o'clock in the morning, staring at the wall. Got no words for this feeling, so you're sitting with it all. I'm gonna turn it off and on. Off. You've gotten numb to the pain, so you're used to how it feels. You tell yourself it's okay, it's just part of the game. Now this is a subtle move, but this is adds extra little details, extra little nuances to the sound itself. So on lead vocals especially, this is a technique that I'm using almost all the time. Number three is that you need to be automating your reverbs. If you're just setting your reverbs like I just did here and setting the fader and saying, sounds good, see you later, that is not how professional producers and professional mixing engineers work with reverbs. Reverbs need to be automated to create all sorts of depth. So by automating reverbs, we're actually creating contour as the song is happening in real time. So what I'm actually gonna do is show you all the automation on the actual mix, because so far what I've done is I'm creating kind of dummy buses to show you the example so I'm not screwing with the actual mix itself. So here's what happens when you can see all the automation. So all these up here are my reverbs and delays. Look at this, there you go. So this is all of the automation that is happening throughout the entire song. So you can see, especially up here, this is my Valhalla reverb. It starts really quiet and then it actually increases here for a second and then comes back down. And just listen to how this makes a difference. Tell me why you feel so lost and confused. I know you're feeling jaded. Now, obviously you can hear this down here, which was a, a throw, a, a vocal throw. But what's happening, I'm gonna turn that off, is when I get to this final phrase. No, you're feeling jaded. The reverb actually goes up on jaded and then it expands that space. So this is helping just create extra dimension to the whole song. I wanna show you here a little bit more. And so you can actually even see here, I bring the reverb all the way down to zero. So when I sing this, this uh, moment right before the chorus going into the chorus, Tell me why are you so It actually dries up and it helps the vocals feel a lot more forward. We're gonna talk about that here in just a second as well. So you can see here throughout this entire song, there's a lot of automation happening where I'm trying to push up the reverb and push down the reverb to create a different sense of dimension and contour throughout the entirety of the song. Some songs don't need as much automation, whereas other songs are using a crazy amount of automation. This song here, actually, I would say, not as much automation as some of my other songs. Now, before we show you the next one, chances are you're watching this video because you obviously want to learn how to get better at producing your own music. So here's the thing. I have an online program called Producer Accelerator, and it takes you through the entire process of producing music from start all the way to finish to final mix. We have over 300 lessons in the entire program. You get access to my private community. We host weekly Feedback Friday calls every single week where you can submit your music, where we can listen to it and give you honest feedback and honest critiques on your music, which is one of the most valuable things that you can get when you're learning how to produce your own music. Because too often, people who are learning to produce are doing it in isolation. They're doing it almost like in a vacuum where you're never actually getting someone who really knows what they're doing to listen to your music to help you see, hey, here are the things you actually should be working on. Because what we've learned is that a lot of times is that a lot of aspiring producers and amateur producers think that they need to work on this thing over here, when in reality, they actually need to work on a bunch of other things over here that they don't even have an awareness of, because you don't know what you don't know. And what's more is we're getting ready to release Producer Accelerator 2.0, which is the biggest update we've made in over three years since launching the program. We're adding entirely new courses altogether. Specifically, we're adding more content on music marketing and understanding how to grow yourself as an artist as well. Now with that update, there is gonna be a price increase, but until we actually launch 2.0, we're giving a massive discount to anyone who joins before we launch 2.0. So if you use this code right here at checkout, you can get that discount and we will see you inside there. 
Let's move on to the next one. Let's go. I don't even know what number we're on, but we're moving on to the next one. And that is using multiple different reverbs for different sections of the song. So going back to Jaded here, you can see that I have multiple different effects channels here. And you can see this one here is Realm and this one is Valhalla. These are two completely different reverbs that I'm using. And what you'll notice here is that I automate one down as the other one goes up. I'm actually using a completely different reverb, a completely different space for different sections of the song. Now, the reason I do this is because it helps differentiate section to section. Now, sometimes you can do this in a subtle nuanced way and in other times you can, you can really make the entire thing sound totally different by using a different space. So I wanna just show you what I'm talking about here. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is just play this section right in here before we make a switch here. So this is happening at the very tail end of the chorus and it's going into the bridge. You'll hear that this is using a plugin called Realm. This is the Native Instruments plugin. And you can see here I have a de in front of that too because Realm especially I, I find really accentuates some of those consonances. And then it goes to Valhalla in the bridge. Let's just listen to this. I know you're feeling shaded. So what's happening is, is that in the chorus here, we're just using Realm, but then once we get into this bridge, you can hear it's way bigger in terms of space. So just listen to how this sounds. Here at the end of this, this chorus, you can hear the reverb's definitely there. It's a, it's a nice big space, but as soon as that bridge comes in, everything gets bigger. I know you're feeling shaded. You're not worth this, you're not alone. You're not the sum of all now, obviously, that's just using the lead vocal. If not, once we throw the gang vocals, it makes it sound that much bigger, too. You're not worth this, you're not alone. You're not the sum of all your wrongs. I know you're feeling helpless. So when you're moving from one section of a song to the next section of the song, one of the best ways that you can actually change how a vocal is perceived, or not even just a vocal, but even other instruments, is to use a different space or add in an additional space. So on this bridge, I want it to feel glorious. I wanted this to feel like this is the moment where it's like, you're not, you're not helpless, you're not worthless, you're not alone. And so to help kind of get that message across, I wanted to use reverb to make it an even bigger space to help it feel like this, hey, we're wrapping your arms around you. This is the one other thing I'll say as a side note is don't, don't just use plugins for the sake of using plugins. Like if you heard how I just described what I was going for, have intentionality and purpose behind the moves that you're making. Don't just be like, oh, I'm gonna do this thing here because you know Nathan said use it on a different section. You should actually have a reason for doing the things that you're doing instead of just slapping things on. Okay. Thanks for coming to my TED talk on that one. That's all I'll say about that. So the next tip that I have, we're gonna be using a different song to demonstrate with. And that is understanding how to use reverb to place where something is in space. Now again, I'm gonna be using a vocal because it's the easiest thing to hear on vocals especially. But one thing that I've noticed that a lot of amateur producers do is they'll use big reverbs and they just overdo it. Like the reverb is too loud and as a result, things feel very pushed back in space when that is very likely not what the song is always calling for. So in this song here, this is a song that's not even uh, totally mixed yet, so I can kind of mess with it a little bit more. I wanna show you the very beginning because at the very beginning, you'll notice here, it's an incredibly dry vocal. There's almost no reverb on the vocal as a whole, but then we use the reverb later on to push it back in space. This will make sense in a second. Like a thief in the night You try to take me by surprise Don't want to stand up and fight So you wear your disguise Okay, so as you can hear right now, this vocal is very, very front and center. Very, very forward. So a really important principle to understand is that if I start using more reverb, it's going to take a lot of energy out of the vocal as a whole. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about here. So first things first, if we actually look at the reverbs themselves, this right here, this channel right here is my big reverb that I'm using, which again, you can see I'm using automation. Automation, friends, every single song, there should be automation on your reverbs. There is absolutely none of it. There is absolutely no big reverb at the beginning at all. The only reverb that I'm using is a room reverb. Apart from that, it, there's literally no reverb. It's just a small room. So this is what the vocal sounds like completely raw. Like a thief in the night. You try to take me by surprise. Okay, 
That is obviously a very dry vocal, but the dryness of the vocal and the lack of big reverb helps actually bring it forward and bring it close. It makes it start to feel like it's right in front of your face, which is adding to the energy of the song. All right, so let's actually try putting some of this Valhalla reverb in and see what this sounds like now. Like a thief in the night You try to take me by surprise don't want to stand up and fight. I'm not saying this sounds bad, right? I'm not saying this sounds bad. And, and I get that some of you might say this is, this is really detailed, which it also turns out that if you want to make really great music, then you got to pay attention to the detail. But watch what happens now as I take this reverb and bring it down. You're going to literally feel as this vocal almost comes closer to you. Like a thief in the night, you try to take me by surprise. Don't want to stand up and fight. So you wear your disguise Oh, it makes me cynical And it's so typical So when it comes down to it, you can actually take reverbs away to help bring something closer to you and actually add energy as well. But what you'll notice here is that I am using this reverb later on, that bigger one that I was talking about, to add space in the chorus. And this is what I'm talking about where we can kind of start adding some of the things we talked about, which is using different things in different sections and automating one thing over here and then bringing it in later. So listen to what happens once we get to the chorus. Take a stand for the light. I get my hands in the dirt. I'm no stranger to the dark. So if we actually solo out these vocals, you'll be able to hear really well what I'm talking about. Watch the reverbs here and see the automation, how it kind of starts up and it comes down and it's very, very hard down. I'm no stranger to the dark. I'm no stranger to the dark. I'm not a saint, I'm not a hero. I fall somewhere in the middle, I'm no stranger to the dark. So the main point here I'm trying to stress is that I'm actually even within the context of one section of the song, there are times where I want the vocal to all of a sudden kind of come forward at you and then kind of get pushed back. So I'm no stranger to the, that part needs to be really front and center, very much in front of your face. And then when I start singing that dark, that's a more elongated vocal phrase, which also makes sense that it would have more reverb and it kind of opens that space of the reverb. So now that we're thinking about that, listen to it one more time. Stranger to the dark. I'm no stranger to the dark. And then when I sing this next line, which is, I'm not a saint, I'm not a hero, I fall somewhere in the middle, I add even more space, unless I actually listen to this in the context with the instrumental and everything. I'm not a saint, I'm not a hero. I fall somewhere in the middle, I'm no stranger to the. The main point I'm trying to stress here is that professional level music is going to be doing stuff like this. That if you were just to listen to it without actually looking at what's happening, you think this sounds sick, this sounds awesome, but there's a lot more happening underneath of the hood, behind the curtain, so to speak, than you might recognize. If you want to go deeper on any of this stuff, you should definitely join Producer Accelerator. This is definitely the cheapest time that you can possibly buy the course before we launched Producer Accelerator 2.0. I hope this helped you. With that said, I'll see you in the next one.